time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, what is the year 2014 going to bring us in the state of Pennsylvania? And what do we have to look forward to, uh, particularly uh, the State House? Uh, my guest, uh, Senator John Udichak, certainly no stranger to the Sam LaSant Show. John is the, from the 14th Senatorial Pennsylvania Senatorial District and uh, been very active in the last number of years working on many projects. John, thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me. Happy uh, New Year. Same to you. Happy New Year to you. And my uh, girls, how are all the girls doing? The girls are doing great. We had a little, uh, some sickness that ran through the family over the holiday, but they had a beautiful Christmas. It was a great ages for the girls, ranging from two years old to eight. Uh, and the twins in the middle being six, so it was a great Christmas, great family Christmas. So the baby is two years old. Yes. Now I remember, I, it just seems like yesterday she was born. Yeah. Because you were, you were on the show at the time, I remember that. So now you're sick, and, and we were talking about this, you know, uh, in, in, in particularly with you, I mean, I see people and you'll shake hands, et cetera, but you, you know, politicians yeah. are shaking hands all the time, and that could be a, a, always a concern. Shaking hands, hugs, and hugs and kisses, all. and yeah. it's all uh, Well, I'm it's not kissing good. you, but I'll <laughs> shake your hand. Yeah. It's all good, but yeah, uh, yeah. no, they had a great Christmas at, at great ages. They're, they're, uh, uh, they went their first day back to school today, so, uh, you know, it was a big day for them uh, after the long holiday break, but uh, it's great. Uh, we talk about family all the time and how important it is and, and how... That informs uh, how I go to work every day. That's, uh, I was just going to lead it. So when you, when, you, when, you, when you have your own children and you have your own family, I say sometimes politicians get a bad rap. You know, and I think good politicians make for good government, okay? Uh, and someone has to do it. And, you know, you've been there and, and you, you've certainly been doing a, a great job. You know, I may not agree on everything, but the point is you, you've been there and you've always been available to, to the public. Um, w with that in mind, you have to have that... Um, this is your family, so you're making rules and laws that affect your family. How, how do you see, the, before I get into specifics here, uh, how do you see the future here in the state of Pennsylvania, John? Well, for me, you know, it started with my parents. I mean, the work ethic, blue collar work ethic of my parents and now having a, a family of my own and thinking about their future, uh, not just thinking about today, what decisions are good for today, really what are good decisions uh, for 20 years down the road. Uh, are very challenging times in northeastern Pennsylvania, challenging times in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have high unemployment, what almost seems to be a chronic underemployment, where folks uh, may have a skill set or may have an education and attainment level that doesn't match the salaries that they're getting, and so it impacts different issues of quality of life in our community, and the crime issue is a good example of that, where when you grow up or I grew up, the issues that we're facing today in terms of gangs or drug trafficking organizations, the type of crime, the type of violent crime that we're seeing in Luzerne County uh, in 2012 for the first time cracking the top 10 in, in, in high crime rate counties in Pennsylvania. This year in 2013 with 20 homicides, 13 of them alone in, in the city of Wilkes-Barre, we're probably going to break the top five. That's a very different policy uh, set of challenges that, that I certainly didn't expect uh, in, in terms of growing up in northeastern Pennsylvania and now having a chance to be a leader in northeastern Pennsylvania. So even though there are those challenges, I'm still very optimistic. I mean, it's what is ingrained to me from my parents uh, that tomorrow can be better if you work hard enough. And, and we're going to go to work every day with that same mindset that we can make uh, Pennsylvania better. We can turn around these job numbers, these poor job numbers in Pennsylvania, and that we can invest in education and in the quality of life in our communities. You have to work hard enough. You have to build partnerships. And I think that's what I've demonstrated more than anything else over the last uh, three years. We build partnerships, whether that's with Congressman Barletta, whether that's Representative Tuhill up here in Greater Hazleton, or whether that's with Senator John Rafferty, who was very instrumental in helping us on the mobile street crime unit uh, that we were able to advance through Attorney General Kathleen Kane. So Democrats, Republicans, those that want to work hard and do the right thing, we're going to build a partnership with, and we're going to start turning around these negative numbers. And that's what I, I, that's what I, uh, I like to hear, John, is that you're going to do a job. And um, yes, I know you're a Democrat. Yes, I know there's a Republicans, okay, and, and you know, you, you have parties. You need to have parties. But I think if you go th to accomplish the objective of getting the job done, uh, you've worked very well with Tuhill. You've worked very well with uh, Barletta. <coughs> Speaking of that, you know, you talked about... Uh, the violent crime uh, situation. Where, since 2011, um, I guess when, when, you, when you started this effort, okay, um, 
has there, have you seen any improvements? In, well, first of all, explain to our viewers what you guys have been doing. Okay, sure. I don't refer to Tuella as a guy, but I'm just saying she's involved in that as well. Back in 2011, the U.S. Department of Justice issued a report, a report that I think really was the evidence we needed to convince other leaders who may not have been uh, as open to the idea that we needed to put a plan in place to battle criminal gangs and drug trafficking organizations. The Department of Justice issued a report saying northeastern Pennsylvania is a target zone. They're looking at our area, one, because of the lack of local police departments. They're looking at the area because of the interstate corridors, because there is a market and less competition in terms of other, other uh, uh, criminals so they can set up shop and, 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 and push drugs in our neighborhoods and our schools. So as a response, Congressman Barletta and I, we, we formed Operation Gang Up. Bring in the experts. Take the politics out, no longer about Democrat, Republican, about building community-based regional solutions. Because what Congressman Barletta learned as mayor was that the Hazleton problem started first in northeastern Pennsylvania. It started in the late 1990s and the early 2000s. And a lot of folks in the Wyoming Valley said, well, that's Hazleton's problem. That's not our problem. But it's really a regional problem. It's the corridors. It's 80, 81. So we need to address it as a regional problem, not just as Hazleton against the world or Wilkes-Barre against the world. These are issues that spill across municipal boundaries. So Operation Gang Up was about bringing the region together. And as a result, we've been very successful. And again, partnering with Republican leaders, Democrat leaders, those that wanted to be helpful on this issue. We've had a great ally in Attorney General Kathleen Kane, great ally in Senator Dominic Pileggi, the, the Republican Majority Leader, and Senator Rafferty, and of course, working with Congressman Barletta. We put Pennsylvania's first anti-gang law in the books. Prior to the, 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 the initiation of Operation Gang Up, there was no, no uh, Pennsylvania law against gangs specifically. We were able to change that. And part of the law now, which I think is very important, particularly to our kids, when we talk about those families, it is now illegal in Pennsylvania to forcibly recruit a juvenile under the age of 16 into a gang. That's how they get a real stranglehold on the community when they were able to recruit and build up their ranks. So we changed that. We got a mobile street crime unit, two and a half million dollars in last year's budget that the governor signed, Governor Coverage signed. At the Attorney General now, we'll have a mobile street crime unit that can go into any region of Pennsylvania and help local police departments like Wilkes-Barre, like Hazleton, Pittston, Nanico, any local department and build that, that really force multiplier effect. The resources of the federal government through the FBI, the state police, the county, district attorney, bringing all those resources, even though we have limited resources because the budgets are so bad in Washington and Harrisburg, there's still ways that we can use the resources that we have to, to great effect and, and the mobile street crime unit is one way to do that. In addition to those two things, we also got training into our schools and into our local police departments. So they got training in terms of the gang issue. That's already uh, produced dividends. Our next big, big initiative is trying to create an after school program like the SHINE program in Carbon and Schuylkill counties. They do a phenomenal job. It gets results. It improves education attainment levels, decreases juvenile crime. Last year in the budget, we got around $400,000 for the Carbon County program. We're looking to try to replicate that success so that not only are we cracking down on the criminals and getting tough on crime, we're also giving children a positive pathway in life through an after-school program. So you're getting the message out, okay? So that, that, because that's the most important thing. When you, when you, when you started the, the campaign, uh, I know you were on with Barletta and, and the, uh, uh, the FBI gentleman, I forget his name, but uh, very, very nice person, uh, and to get the, the message out. So when you get a message out and people know, you know, don't mess with the state of Pennsylvania when it comes to gangs, okay? Uh, at one point in time, in 2012, which was sad this year, that Luzerne County was one of the top 10 Pennsylvania counties with high crime rates, okay? Now, of course, I, according to uh, when I had District Attorney Salvanis on the show, majority of those crimes, John, are, are drug-related, okay? So now we have the drug-related crimes. People are... are um, are robbing, stealing to, to, to satisfy their habits, okay? So it's like a catch-22 degree uh, situation. What, 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 what's this unit doing to try to educate people not to buy? Because if there's a supply, there'll be a demand, okay? And so people say, well, oh my God, well, there's a supply. How do we educate young people, whomever, not to be in, involved with drugs? Right. 
And that's where the after school program comes in. When you think about uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, most children yes. are sent home, yeah. parents are working, most parents do not work within a half hour of their residence. So from two to eight, six hours, uh, a children can be left unattended, unsupervised. Maybe they're not in sports, maybe they're not in extracurricular activities. So they're leaving that school and going home and, and, and getting into an environment th that's not productive. And so I think the after school program time and time again have been proven. The success rate in carbon is very Im impressive where 85% of children that are in the program, their parents get involved in the program. So having that perennial engagement in that child's life is so important. Where we see that cycle broken too often in, in families that get, uh, get hit by drugs, where they succumb to the drug trade, where they succumb to gangs, and the kids get sucked into the gang life, we need to give them positive pathways. And I think an after-school program, and there's some successes. There's, you know, the, the, the Head Start program is very good for the early education, but we're talking about trying to get those, particularly between the ages of 10 and 15. That seems to be the target zone for these gangs. We want to make sure that there's a positive pathway for those kids rather than having to succumb to crime or, or juvenile delinquency. Folks, I'm talking to Senator John Udichak, and when we come after the break, I want to ask you a few questions. I, I, want to, I, I do want to talk about transportation and, and what's happening with maybe the, um, um, the, the sale of the liquor stores. But one thing I want to ask is this. If there was a bill, okay, um, like Colorado has, to legalize marijuana, don't answer it. I want to get your answer after the break, okay? Would you vote for it? Talking to Senator John Udichak, stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. Remember, I uh, want to, uh, ssptv.com, 24-7, all of our shows are there. My email is sam at ssptv.com. I want to welcome all the new viewers that we're gaining in uh, all of Eagle Rock, I think, right now, and we're going to be going into Shenandoah on Service Electric Cable Vision. I think we're close to 42, 43,000 households just on the system here in Service Electric Cable Vision. Comcast, as you know, folks, if you have friends in Pottsville, we've been there for 10 years. We were on Comcast Cable 7. We're now on Comcast uh, Cable 190 for our programming. And Channel 15, uh, we're running our news 8, 10 times a day on Channel 15, and we say thank you to Comcast for that. My guest, Senator John Udichak, no stranger to the San Sancho. He services the 14th Senatorial District in Pennsylvania. John, so all right, so in Colorado... Uh, they've uh, they voted to legalize for recreational purposes marijuana okay uh, all right so the bill hits Pennsylvania and they come to Senator John Udichak say will you support this bill for recreational uh, use of marijuana well I have serious reservations uh, about that we don't have a bill uh, of that nature the only discussion really in Pennsylvania in in recent months have has dealt with meta medicinal uh, marijuana and, and so I'm while I'm open to the discussion because I've seen some tremendous programs where that has helped, uh, particularly children uh, with certain that are afflicted with certain diseases, uh, it, 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 epilepsy, other things. Yes. Uh, but I'm not a doctor. I'm going to look to the scientist uh, and come down uh, on the side of the scientist in terms of uh, you know adding another substance to the market that can be abused gives me pause, and I think that we would have to uh, have a thorough. And, and, and vigorous debate on that issue in Pennsylvania before we would go the route of Colorado. The thing here, uh, I, again, from what just the knowledge I've had, I agree with you with the medical marijuana. I think I would support the, the support that because I, even when I had Ed Payne on the show, uh, Ed had talked about this. But the thing about recreational that I'm a little nervous about or concerned about is this. Is, it, is marijuana a gateway to other heavy uses of drugs? Now. I'm sure Colorado's not stupid. They have doctors and, and people who have, you know, have done homework. And um, is it, you know, d does it tell the story that, you know, once you start doing marijuana, it's like, you know, a person starts drinking beer. And they're having a, you know, and we've all experienced, let's have a shot. Hey, we have this shot. Then, hey, let's have an after-dinner shot. Then you have the after-dinner shot. Okay, well, you started with beer. Okay, and now that wasn't enough for you. Then you're now moving to shots and you're moving to this. I don't know. I, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I'm thinking if you talk to drug, people who are dealing with people who are on, 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 on drugs, would they tell you 
that that may be not a good thing. That, because I know the tax money and money is important right now, but in the long run, will we, will we pay the price for this, John? Well, I, I think, you know, they say states are the incubators of democracy and, mm -hmm. and that you're seeing Colorado and some other states advance measures, medicinal marijuana or recreational as, as Colorado went. So we're going to have to pay very close attention. And obviously the federal government has not weighed in on that issue, so we're going to pay attention to that. But again, I try to look to the doctors and the scientists, I, and it does concern me, certainly as the father of four sure. children, uh, that, that, you know, whether or not it's a gateway drug or whether or not, uh, you know, it becomes something that, that uh, cannot be controlled. And, and I think, you know, you, you're hitting on another point, or, or these state governments or governments looking at just any and every way to raise revenue. Uh, in, in, in Pennsylvania, we, we're having that discussion around gaming and whether or not we're having too much uh, access to, to gaming it, because of this uh, insatiable appetite for, for revenue, for, for state revenue. So uh, I, I am concerned that that would be the motivator rather than sound science. I would like to stay with sound science. I, I would agree with you. Um, speaking of revenue and, and, and the transportation bill, okay, explain to our viewers just exactly how this bill works. Well, first of all, uh, it really the first comprehensive uh, a transportation funding plan in two decades. It, it's, it's a public safety issue and it's a jobs issue. Uh, when you come down and you know that uh, just a few months ago, the secretary of uh, PennDOT uh, weight restricted a thousand bridges in Pennsylvania. Uh, that's a safety issue. Uh, it's also an economic issue. That means uh, the, the trucking companies, those that are doing business on Pennsylvania roads, are going to be impacted. And, you know, I saw a figure where it was costing the average Pennsylvania driver $1,200 a year every year that Pennsylvania went without a funding package in place. I mean, we had a $3.5 billion shortfall on what we needed in terms of bridge maintenance, road maintenance, new construction. And so uh, this is the, really the first signature achievement of the administration in terms of getting Democrats and Republicans to work together on a bipartisan comprehensive bill. I mean, to just show you the nature of how, how bipartisan it was in the Senate, the vote was 43 to 7. Uh, so that's a pretty bipartisan support for a measure. Now, we eliminated the 12 cent flag tax at the pump. Uh, and now it gets complicated because it goes to the oil company franchise tax. The tax is now on uh, uh, the, uh, the distributors. And it's done in a complicated formula set by the Secretary of Revenue. That tax was capped at $1.25 back in 1983. So it's an artificial cap. Even though the price at that wholesale pump is over $3, it's artific artificially capped. So we, we're going to gradually lay off that cap. And so gas prices, if they stay flat or uh, they go down, people will not see that jump. But there is a potential uh, for it to go up uh, over the next five years. We're just going to have to pay attention to the price at the pump. But they took the, 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 uh, the flat tax away. Yes, that's okay. been eliminated. So then the other tax, we don't know whether it's 12, 13, 14, or 15 cents per gallon on top of that to satisfy the, the, right. the revenues. Okay. Right. Uh, what were some of the predictions? Uh, I mean, did they give you, like, I, I know they can. Well, There's well, a range where, it, you know, <coughs> it, that, it, that it could be six cents a year over that over that five-year period. But how, how about if gas comes down? If it comes down, it, it, it could be less. Could be and less. so that's why it's, it's complicated. Uh, it, we did increase uh, some of the other user fees, you know, in terms of the driver's license registration, but modestly, mm -hmm. only a dollar, and then they're, then they're tied to, to inflation. The way that I looked at it, and it's the way I look at, it, at, at, at all tax policy, a particular issue that I care about, uh, the property tax issue in terms of eliminating property tax. Again, it's not a fair tax. Uh, a flat tax, to me, is not the best way. Uh, the best way is, is to reflect if prices go down, then the tax goes down. And I think that's, that's, it's more fair to the consumer. Uh, but there's no question we needed to make an investment in our infrastructure. Two projects right here in the greater Hazleton area. The expansion of uh, Route 424 and the uh, interchange at 924 at the Humboldt Industrial Park. That has the potential to open up thousands of acres of land and create 5,000 new jobs right here in greater Hazleton. That's an investment that we have to be willing to make. And, and so I, that's why ultimately I supported the measure along with the uh, uh, 42 other colleagues in the, in the Senate. 
Gaming revenues. Um, I, for years, I've been asking for you know just a, a review of where the gaming money was coming from, and the only person ever who came on my show was Dan Muser, who was a secretary, who gave me true facts. Uh, that's why I, I, I respect him so much because he gave me facts. He said, "Sammy, these are this is what's coming in." We were not, not, not uh, Muser, but we were promised years ago. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, John. Um, I know you're older than me, but you, you know, but you may remember. They were said when we got the gaming money, property taxes were gonna, you know, disappear, and school taxes, and the seniors uh, who are fixed, anyone on fixed income, we're gonna get some breaks. Okay, I haven't seen any of that. I, I, I mean, and, and then he explained where the money's going for education, etc. I mean, so we're. Where is, where is we going with property tax? Where are we going with some relief? Well, I, I think it's fair to say that in, in previous administrations it may have been oversold in terms of all the good things that were going to come out of, out of the gaming industry. Uh, but the facts are uh, we do generate about a billion dollars, just shy of a billion dollars uh, every year for property tax relief. Now, unfortunately, that's a $15 billion problem. And so... Uh, folks uh, in, in Greater Hazel and a little different, they signed up under Act 50, which was a different property tax relief plan, was one of one of only a handful uh, that did that. But say, for example, down in, in, in Nanny Coke or in Hanover Township, homeowners will see a $200 or $150 reduction on their tax bill. If you're paying $4,000 in taxes and you're getting $150 rebate, that's not a big deal. That's why we got to change the system. Now, where it was very beneficial in terms of the gaming introduction of Pennsylvania was the property tax and rent rebate program, our seniors. You know as well as anybody uh, that our seniors on a fixed income cannot continue to take the increases because their revenue is not going, their, their income is not going up. So the property tax and rent rebate program got a big boost out of gaming. In fact, we had about 40 percent of seniors in Luzerne County had their property taxes eliminated by the expansion of the property tax and rent rebate. So currently, I support Senate Bill 76, uh, which would be a property tax elimination, which would be a shift uh, to a personal income tax and sales tax and eliminate property taxes. Now, we've gained momentum for the first time in, that I can remember in the last two decades where we have 26 co-sponsors in the Senate. Uh, that had always been a regional issue, not so much a statewide issue. So we've gotten tremendous traction. There's a long way to go, and I'm, we're hoping that the administration, that the governor steps up and says this is going to be an essential issue this year uh, because as, you know, the transportation bill and other, uh, uh, other issues where folks are paying more out of their pocket, uh, this is a way to drive real, real tax relief to the folks that need it most, our seniors and middle-class Pennsylvanians who are struggling. Folks, I'm talking to Senator John Dudichak. We come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the... Um, uh, property tax relief, and also about some of the great things that have happened. Uh, additional state, uh, additional state troopers, uh, 400 of them to a, to a degree here, uh, and some other uh, areas that uh, John has been very active in. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Hassan Show. For my guest is Senator John Udijak, no stranger. And I want to tell you, Senator, I, I really appreciate the fact that when I call you, Mark always responds, and, and our news department appreciate it very much. At least Mark calls me back. You're very important. You know, the governor will call me, but uh, Mark calls me. My, At least Mark will call the me. Girl, the girls won't let me have my iPhone. They're playing <laughs> on the iPhone. I don't get it back. That, that you don't get it back. Some of the things you've done, okay, I, I mentioned that you increased state trooper um, by 400 troopers, okay, I guess there's a definitely needed. They do a great job, i got to tell you. Some other things that, are, that you were involved in, in participating in. Well, you know, crime has been a central issue over the last three years in northeastern Pennsylvania, and that's, that's what we focused on. Uh, so we, we passed a new anti-gang law, mobile street crime unit, uh, two and a half million dollars in the state budget, uh, a four million dollar uh, child predator unit through Attorney General Kathleen Kane, uh, again working with Senators Jay Corman, the Appropriations Chairman, and Senator John Rafferty in, in fighting for those dollars. Uh, and, 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 you know, working now with all the schools, uh, the LIU, uh, uh, Joe DeLuca and, and Tony Greco, who runs the LIU uh, in, in down in Luzerne, they, uh, the Safe Schools Initiative that we passed, eight and a half million dollars in the state budget to make our schools safer. Uh, and, and that was Senator Scainati's bill. So really, I think the, the, the example is work hard, work together, 
in good things will get done for the community that you care about. And you know, John, you do that very well. That's why I have a lot of respect for you. And I'm, I'm not endorsing you by no means, but I gotta tell you, I always had a lot of respect for you because you're nonpartisan. You go and you get the job done. When you have to do, you have to do. And, and I, I think that's a, a good message because people are so down on politicians these days. You know, they're all a bunch of bums. They don't do anything. But there's a lot of people that really go and do a, do a good job. And I appreciate that. Uh, you, you know, go to his website, folks. Um, Senator, you did check your website and you'll uh, see a lot more uh, of what he does. Um, anyway, I wish you the best. Thank you. Uh, please um, come around again sometime. You know, Anytime. Uh, I know I have to talk to your boss, Mark. Mark, yeah. Mark's your boss. Yeah. He, he'll, right. he'll say, right, Mark, you'll, you'll get it here, right? <laughs> uh, folks, again, uh, my email is sam at ssptv.com. Appreciate all the great comments. And remember, welcome all of those additional viewers. We have an Eagle Rock. It's nice to have you on, and we'll have Shenandoah on pretty soon. So I uh, appreciate that. And once again, I appreciate the, um, the comments you're making on the Sam LaSanne Show, as well as our News 13 Now and the Girls Show. Folks, the girls are up to 125,000 people watching the Girls Show each week. Uh, of course, I'm still at 150,000 people. And when they hit the 150, then we'll have to talk. Right, John? The, the girls, that's, that's perfect for that's you. Perfect. The yeah. girls for you. Uh, we'll see you next time.